Today in the news, we got a tricky motherboard chipset, some APU news, and a score for the ARC. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with AMD. In the last video, we talked about AMD's upcoming CES presentation and about the next generation of motherboards that would launch alongside Zen 4 on the AM5 platform. Essentially, we got a leak from HXL over on Twitter that said that the uh, X670 chipset was essentially B650 plus B650. There was some theorizing saying that this meant it had double the I.O. on a single chip or that AMD might use MCM technology on that chipset, similar to what they do on Ryzen CPUs where uh, you have two chips on a single substrate. Well, we got some clarifications from the uh, leaker and it's just two B650 chips. Not two chiplets on a substrate, not two chips that have been manufactured on the same wafer and then cut together, nope. X670 would apparently just have two separate chipsets handling the PCIe lanes. Kind of brings you back to North Southbridge things. According to the uh, current leaks, Zen 4 CPUs would have 28 lanes of PCI Express. That's four more than current Zen 3 CPUs, Ryzen 5000 specifically. With Ryzen 5000, four lanes go to the X570 chipset. Well, in Zen 4's case, at least with X670 motherboards, you would have eight lanes going to the chipset, four for each of the B650 chipsets, I guess. Now, chipsets, just like any other uh, silicon parts, get hot, and with X570, it was a bit of a problem. Most of those motherboards needed a fan. And now with X670, you need to cool two of these chips. And you need to find the space to do that on an already pretty crowded PCB. I guess now we understand why the rumors say that X670 will be hard to do an ITX motherboard for. Next up, let's talk APU. The only thing that might actually be available and get you a halfway decent gaming experience. So currently we have the 5000G series of APUs and as usual, AMD decided to stick to Vega graphics for them. The highest end APU has eight Zen 3 cores coupled with eight Vega cores clocked at two gigahertz. What does that give you? A very meh gaming experience. You can game, don't get me wrong, but the experience is just subpar in my opinion. I mean, the performance barely exceeds that of an RX 550. That's a nearly five year old GPU that was basically the lowest end you could purchase off the shelves. Well, according to current leaks, it looks like things are going to change for the better. The specs for a Rembrandt chip just leaked and it's fairly impressive. This is for the 6900HX. Now I know it's a laptop chip, but so far every APU started on laptops and eventually came over to the desktop platform. So the 6900HX is an eight core Zen 3 Plus CPU. I say Zen 3 Plus specifically because uh, it's Zen 3, but on six nanometers. I'm not sure if that's the actual actual naming scheme. Anyways, that's the CPU, and this time it will come with RDNA 2 graphics. The name of that IGP would be the Radeon 680M. Earlier in the month, we learned that it could have up to 12 compute units. That's a RDNA 2 IGP with 12 compute units. It's a lot. And in terms of performance, we don't know if it was the 12 CU version or any other version, but a TimeSpy benchmark leaked and it scored 2,700 points. That's very good. That's 10 to 15% better than a 1050 Ti. And that's an engineering sample. Who knows how far they can push this? Who knows how far we can push this with overclocking uh, when it comes to the desktop market? Anyways, for laptops, it would be announced in Q1 of the new year. As for the uh, desktop variant, we'll have to wait a little, but with the uh, way that shortages are going now and with the whole future Rama virus giving us a second blow, fifth blow actually in my area, GPU manufacturing is probably still being affected. And lastly, let's get our informational fix on the savior coming to maybe probably not help with the shortage. Intel, 
There's a benchmark for uh, Ashes of the Singularity that popped up on the leaderboard, and it looks like Team Blue is making some progress. Now, we don't know what the model of this GPU is. It could be the highest end or a mid-tier one, but it just says Intel XE Graphics. And the score, well, it's a whopping 12,500 points or 126 FPS average. Now I know that Ashes isn't the best metric when it comes to GPU comparisons, but it is one. And according to that, this GPU would lean around a 6700 XT in terms of performance. It's hard to tell though, because the Ashes leaderboard is pretty messed up. Anyways, it's good to see that Intel is making progress with their, uh, I don't know if I should call them ARC or XE nowadays. I believe that they changed it from XE to ARC, uh, but then they keep using XE for the mobile integrated graphics, but the, if you take ARC. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you wanna talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Trains, tops, and roadblocks, I'm ready for it. Two years later, that's when I come and get it. I know you waited for me to get on that comeback. Man, I was waiting for me to come back. Uh, it's alright, it's all good. One step out of time, like I'm walking through the hood. Uh, yeah, but I